Cave Story was another game that people asked me to review on Twitter, mainly due to my purchase of Cave Story on the Nintendo Switch, so a lot of people were interested in knowing if this game was worth buying on the Nintendo Switch. I will once again be looking at this game from the perspective of someone who has never played it, much less even heard of it. However, as always, veteran players can get an idea of if they would like to buy this game on the Nintendo Switch. Cave Story took 5 years to develop and it was initially released in 2004, which for many will raise eyebrows. Why is a game from 2004 being released as a new game on the Nintendo Switch? Well, it might be due to it being considered an almost, if not, perfect game with ratings of 10 out of 10. Developed by Nicholas, among other collaborative effort, the game has since then been ported to many devices, PC and Steam being the easiest and cheapest to find. However, the Nintendo Switch's port asks for $29.99. That is $10 less than the recent Crash Insane Trilogy released alongside it, and this is just one game, instead of three with that Crash Insane Trilogy. So is it really worth the cash for some indie game? Using the five pillars of gaming, I will be reviewing this game based on control, audio, gameplay, story, and graphics slash aesthetics. To begin with, this is a stylized game in the vein of the 2D glory days. Though the graphics look limited, this does borrow a greater color palette than the simple Nintendo would have or Atari, and the effects along with animations are far superior to the limitations of the 8-bit consoles. If you are not a fan of retro graphics, then this game's graphics and and aesthetics are wasted on you, but it is rich in environments that are unique with interesting designs from the enemies to those that do help you. The game begins with a wonderful little jingle that can get stuck in your head easily. And while the sound isn't anything stunning, the sound effects seem to go with whatever happens accordingly, and the music is outstanding. Together, it passes the audio department, and with many people wanting to just listen to the music alone, it's very clear that the audio is pretty good in this game. With the Nintendo Switch version, there is even a mini disc that comes with this game. Yes, a mini disc, and it has music on it just for that reason. But there is also YouTube, though it will be extremely compressed on YouTube, so just a warning there. Also with the disc comes a manual, yes, an actual game manual in 2017 with tips, hints, and tricks. Secret endings are hinted at, and of course, it explains the premise of the game, controls, gameplay, etc. It's what you'd expect from a manual. Which leads me to my next point, gameplay and story. The gameplay is simple. This game is a platformer that uses weapons as a means of accomplishing puzzles. It also uses various fetch quests, if then kind of quests where you are tasked to go get something. And and then something will unlock allowing the path forward. But there are bosses as well. While simple, there is a unique system where killing enemies give experience or power to your weapons, allowing you to rank up various weapons and altering them in their power. The more triangles you get, the more power you get, making the pistol a 2-shot kill instead of a 10-shot kill, or allowing you to essentially fire a machine gun so fast that you can almost float by firing it downward. On the contrast, taking damage will reduce the experience and lower your weapon's power, so it's in your best interest to learn how to dodge a lot. As they say, you're gonna have to get good. With floating controls, there were many times where I slipped or felt like I was playing on ice. However, you can get used to it. It's very similar to Mario staying in motion after running. It's just that platforms at times you will jump on are very, very precise, and there's little room for failure. So while the controls work, I personally do feel if they were less slippery, it would have been better, but again, it doesn't break the game. The story is, well, the story is hard to grasp unless you listen to every bit of dialogue and you still might miss some things. Long story short, you are a robot from the surface from some type of war stuck in this cave with amnesia. You don't know what's going on other than that there is once again a madman trying to rule slash destroy this world. I won't spoil the story much more, but just know it's a lot deeper than a shallow plot. And while it too is not necessary for a game like this, the story is very unique in this game. 
Tying this all together, the Switch version comes with a few extra things, like, for example, an actual physical release, manual, CD, and several other features. Apparently, it has upgraded HD graphics. Whatever that is, that's advertised on the GameStop website, so take it for what it's worth because it is a 2D game and it's very hard to notice the difference. There are also several play modes available like Boss Rush and Wind Fortress, as well as others, but I'm not entirely sure if those are completely new or not, so veteran players feel free to comment in the section below. And apparently it also has four unique endings as well. However, is it worth the money? Is this game really worth rebuying almost 14 years after its initial release? Well, if you've never played it and you only have the Nintendo Switch, then yes. And if you are a person who needs a physical copy, then again, yes. However, Steam is severely cheaper, and if you have never played it, but have a PC, and it doesn't even have to be a very powerful PC, this game isn't that demanding, then get it for PC. But again, look up the minimum requirements, because you can't play it on one of the lowest powered PCs. You still need a little something, but it's very, very minimal at most. The Nintendo Switch version seems like the one people would get without any other option for those who were like real fans of the series who really enjoyed it and wanted that physical copy. If you do end up getting this on Steam and not enjoying it or just being terrible at it, then it's not much of a waste of money. You can get a refund, but it's still fairly cheap anyways. But the Switch version, well, that's a big chunk of change and if you buy it new, you can't necessarily just return it because you didn't like it. I cannot emphasize this enough that this is an amazing game. It's fun. People who like platformers and a serious challenge will really enjoy it. it has options for easy mode for newcomers and really difficult modes for veteran players who really need that amped up challenge. But if you are not into pixel art games, platformers, or unique stories, then don't waste your time. With all that said, if you see the gameplay in the background and you think this is a game for you, either catch a Steam sale or spend the cash for other versions of this game where available. Just remember that with the Switch, you are still getting two games. The mobile version that you can take anywhere you want and the console version with the upgraded HD graphics. So keep that in mind as well when you're spending your money. If you enjoyed this review, leave me a like and let me know what you think of this game. Have you ever played it? Do you enjoy it? And which version did you try, own, or even beat? I've been your host Pritamari and I'm signing out. As always, good gaming, God bless, and thanks for watching.